In the previous video, Professor Kotos explained how she became interested in writing. She recognized that good writers were choosing their language depending on the purpose and the audience of the writing. She saw that there wasn't just one correct way to write in English, but instead there are always choices to be made. And the right choice depends on the purpose of the text and its audience. Let's take a look at an example of what Professor Kotos means by purpose and audience. For example, we have a writer who is a graduate student at Iowa State University. And she's writing an email to her friend Kara in Australia. The friend in Australia is the audience for the email. Even if there's only one person, we consider her the audience because she's going to receive and read the email. The Iowa State student chooses the right language for her friend to read. The purpose of the email is to apologize for not sending an email for a long time. She chooses this language. My research has really kept me busy over the past semester. And this, she thinks, is a good way of beginning her apology to her friend. In English, an apology is pretty good when it includes a reason, so that works. Now, let's change the audience and purpose to one that is very important for graduate students. What if the audience is professionals in the field and the purpose is introducing a research article that the student has written? The graduate student wrote a research article to submit to a professional publication. Okay, so the writer is the same graduate student. She is again writing about her research, but the purpose and the audience are different. Can she introduce her research in the same way that she started the email by saying, my research has really kept me busy over the past semester? Is that a good way to start a research article? No, she wouldn't be very successful if she started her research article like that. When the audience is professionals in the field, that's a large audience of people that the writer doesn't know. Plus, when the purpose is to introduce a research article, she needs to write about the research, not about her busy life. But what should the language choice be in this context? Let's take a look at the language successful researchers use to begin their research article. This is an article about incidental vocabulary learning in the journal Language Learning and Technology. Let's see how the authors started their research article. The authors began the article with these sentences. This paper estimates computationally the potential for extensive reading, ER, and extensive viewing, EV, to support the academic and discipline-specific vocabulary needs of students. Research into ER-EV for general vocabulary within second language acquisition has been extensive, Web 2020, with the foundational paper from a computing perspective published in the current journal, Cobb 2007. However, research into EVER to support academic and disciplinary vocabulary has only recently emerged. So their opening statement for their research article is very different from what our writer wrote to her friend in Australia. This is the kind of language that works for the introduction of a research article. It begins by introducing the larger field of research. Then the authors indicate that there has been some work done in this area to set the stage for what comes next. In the next video, I'll ask Professor Kotos why she thinks writing is so important.